Back in the day, you pretty much only had two choices if you wanted kind of like a newer tuner-ish car. You had a 350Z or an Infiniti G35. And now, 17 years later, people are still buying and modifying Infiniti G35s. I'm Alex, Alex at a fine Instagram, and in today's episode of Behind the Wheel, we're gonna be taking a look at Jared's Infiniti G35 on some insanely wide wheels. So Junior has just a little bit of everything done to the G35. He's got a carbon fiber hood and trunk. He's got Ivan front bumper, rear window louvers, air ride, it's the V2 system. And he's got three piece concept one wheels. The full interior swap to all black was actually that cream color before. Some six speed seats, tents, rear camber arms, tow bolts, chop muffler, and of course, some cleared JDM corner lights. So one of the toughest things even before you get into a G35 is understanding a little bit about them and probably the number one thing that they're notorious for is some bad paint. If you look at Junior's G35, you can see that some of it has that same issue. Now, Junior's told me time and time again that he's gonna get it painted, but just like all car modifications, we say we're gonna get things done and then we never actually do. Paint is huge on G35s if you are looking to buy one because it's one of the things that just always seems to go whack. And one special thing about Junior's car is his actual fitment. So these are 12 and a half inch wide rears on some Concept One forged wheels and he went for the fender to lip look. Now one of the tough things about this is this is actually a little bit harder to get than one might think, which you gotta give him credit where credit is due. This is a tough fitment to do. A little bit easier obviously on air suspension compared to coilovers, but still a tough challenge nonetheless. So now that we've walked around and we've talked about the old paint, which is the iconic joke, let's go for a drive, I guess. Oh, geez. All right. Okay. Oh. <sighs> so just like good old early 2000s fashion, we don't have things on a short lanyard. We have things on a long lanyard. If anybody remembers middle school, you always had the lanyards, man. It was like the coolest thing that you could do before you had a car. Or when you got your first car, you always had a long lanyard. Mine was Jägermeister. I thought it was really cool because I had a Jägermeister keychain. First start, we're already off to a great, great start. So one of the tricky things about Junior's car is he already told me, so we kind of got to lie a little bit, is you have to go flip the switch. Please wait. And then go up to the top right. Bottom right. There we go. Because sometimes the rear bags don't pop and then you gotta get them to pop, otherwise you're gonna rub. Let me just do a quick visual check. Yep. Hey Colin, can you do a visual check on the other side of the car to make sure that the wheels are popped out? The number one thing that I will say about air suspension, I love it because it gives a really good look. It gives a really clean look. You can kind of dial it in very nice. I'd say one of the things though that I'm not a huge fan of is the compressor sound, especially when you're running exposed compressors. I think that's probably why I love the CVT system from AccuAir so much is because it finally quiets it down to where it's not this obnoxious noise in the trunk of your car. Besides that, absolutely love air suspension. Now, speaking about Jared's car and the G35 350Z time of its life, it actually was a very good car when it was released. It was a very fun car when it was released too, because the 350Z and the G35 obviously share a lot of a lot of characteristics. I mean, you've got the same motor, you've got essentially a lot of the same structural pieces, you actually have a lot of the, even the same plastics. They just cut out different spaces where they put their things. 
But the really big thing and the difference was is that the G35 actually had quite a sports car oriented history. I mean, it was used by Team Falcon to promote the car and launch in 2003. It won awards right now in 2004 as some of the best sports cars you could actually own at the time. And it was a fantastic car. I mean, a lot of people have a tendency to forget that the G35 was a luxury tuner car that you could modify and still have some comfortable seats. Now, Junior did a lot to this car specifically to try and kind of bring up the flavor, to add a little sauce, if you will. And what he did was is he took a lot of the cream. The cream is probably the most common color on these cars, especially considering when you're trying to find a manual, finding the interior color that you want gets very, very tough. Most of it is black, but you can see that we still have some cream pieces that didn't make its way through the swap, mostly because I'm assuming it would have been hard to take all of that out. When you're looking at running 12 and a half inch wide rears, especially the concept ones with the amount of camber that we do have running in the back and pretty wide fronts, it doesn't drive terrible. That's the good thing. It's actually not the worst thing in the world. I will say that sometimes it feels like it doesn't really want to go where you tell it to, but I assume that that has a lot to do with the fact that there are some insanely wide wheels on the front, some insanely wide wheels on the rear, and not a lot of contact pads. The tires are pretty well tucked in. Junior gave me a couple other disclaimers about the car on things that you probably shouldn't do, which is always kind of fun because when you get to drive a modified car, you get to learn a lot about the car uh, that sometimes people probably don't tell other people. And there's nothing wrong with having little quirks and features with your car. Doug says that all the time, but it's such a good point that really when you're looking at something like this car, a modified car, you have to figure out what is so weird about it. What is just a weird thing that it does that other cars don't do that you'd have to get used to if you owned a car similar to this. And I think the number one thing is, is when you're running that fender to lip fitment in the rear, a lot of times the bags don't pop. So you have to get it up to preset, which on the V2 is the press of a button. And then you have to max out the air pressure in the bags to get the bags to pop. Once you do that, you then can go back down to your other preset to have your ride height established. The number one thing a lot of people give G35s and 350Zs quite a bit of gripe about is the exhaust note because it sounds a little bit like a trombone. And it does, I mean it does. It's just an interesting frequency that you don't get out of a lot of other engines. Is it the worst thing in the world? No. I think when you actually have a proper exhaust that doesn't have you know, a diameter that's the size of your noggin, I think you're pretty much okay. You have to control the output of the exhaust note on these cars, otherwise it really does sound absolutely terrible. And I think Junior did do a pretty good job of trying to keep that all under key versus just having it mostly be aesthetic stuff versus trying to you know, straight pipe the whole bad boy and just send it to kingdom come. From a modification and community standpoint, if anybody's looking to jump into the G35 community, it is still well and active. There's a ton of people that still modify these cars and it's gotten more VIP in terms of what, how you style the cars than anything else. A lot of people are throwing big wide wheels, big deep dish wheels, and then they're just cruising around. These cars aren't really meant to be going fast anymore. And sure, this is just one side of the community. You can get a G35 and go slide it sideways at pretty much any local drift track and have a really good time. You just get some skinny tires, you throw it sideways, you get yourself the manual and you're good to go. But this car specifically seems to see a little bit more of the car show scene side than anything else. But from a reliability standpoint, they're not bad. The biggest weakness with G35s and the biggest weakness with Jared's G35 is definitely just how the car had aged. The paint, oh, there's a pedestrian just walking there. Okay, we ain't gonna do that. Hi, friend. The number one thing with Jared's car is the fact that it's it aged. And with Infinity, they had some very peculiar things happen to it when it did age. The paint just did not seem to hold up. No matter what G35 you look at, if it has original paint, they almost always have paint issues. Same thing with the headlights. Headlights just go yellow for some reason. It just looks like some teeth that just should have been whitened a couple of years prior. They just suffer from just aging and drooping and then they just start to feel sad. Jared did a really good job at trying to keep that out of this car. He's got different headlights. He tried to brush up on the paint as much as possible, literally and figuratively. But the number one thing is, is that he kept it very clean. And when you keep an old car very clean and minimalistic, 
it doesn't date as hard or as fast. When you just go for some clean wheels, a good look, some window tint, nothing else that's really too crazy, you don't give yourself the opportunity to make a mistake to make the car look older than it already does. The G35 is like the exquisite 350Z. It's the one that's just a little bit fancier. And although the 350Z community is much bigger, much wider, has much more support than the G35 equivalent, some people just love jumping into a G35 because it looks different. It's sleeker. It looks a little bit better when it's closer to the ground, in my opinion. The hips are more widened out versus top up on the G35 compared to the 350Z. And in my eyes, I feel like the G35 has a little bit of a lower snout than the 350Z, which is why I think it just looks that much better on air suspension. I think you do have to get used to some of the the aging pieces of the car, like the buttons and the things like that. But besides that, there's nothing really outside of this world that would tell you not to buy one. I think the weirdest thing about this car is probably, well, the more aggressive ride quality because of the tires, which you're sacrificing because you want to look cool and you want to air out in front of your friends and you want your fender to lift fitment, which is, you know, it is what it is. All in all, not a terrible car. Definitely a fun car. Would I want to take it across the country? I'm not too sure. Would I take it to a car show? Sure. Bluetooth, auto connect failed. This is definitely a car for your, I think, hangout around town sort of cars. But the ride quality is a little funky, especially with the wheels and tires, which can cause it to not always be the most fun thing to drive. And it's a little bit loud, and sometimes you feel like you're gonna die, but it looks really good. So there's that. And the interior actually did do really well. I mean, I was a little concerned about the color swap, but it actually looks pretty dang good. Figured it out. The noises this car makes. <laughs> Junior is an interesting fellow. He has orange long hair and he owns two Broncos. So seeing a G35 like this on the ground, I guess isn't too much of a surprise. But when you're looking at the Infiniti G35, it's not a bad car to pick up. It's 260 horsepower, which isn't nothing to scream at, but it's still enough to have a good time. Reliability and the car modifications are definitely something that you can jump into this car. And from a reliability standpoint, it's still a VQ. So it's not that bad. The biggest and toughest things about the car is that it's an early 2000s car that's probably been ridden and driven by 10,000 people. And of course you have an interior and sometimes likes to fall apart. You've got a paint that starts to flake and sometimes you have this weird thing called rust that Infinity couldn't really figure out in the early 2000s. So as a result, I end up giving Junior's car a rating of 20 out of 30. It's a fantastically well put together car that just needs a little couple more pieces in terms of driving where it doesn't feel like it's gonna bounce off off the road. And of course, maybe finally he'll get some paint. I mean, I just don't understand. Oh, by the way, wheels, tires, and suspension fitmanindustries.com. Back to Junior's car, I just really, really think that if he just got a paint job, it would finally pull it together in just such a clean way. I just don't understand why everybody will always say, yeah, I'm gonna do that next season, but then they don't actually end up doing it that season. Then the next season, they say the same thing, and then the next season, they say the same thing. It just doesn't make any sense that people would do that. Just do it, Junior.